We're firing pulse cannons and throwing mechas into buildings. That's right, it's Pacific Rim Extinction from River Horse. This tactical combat strategy game pits teams of monstrous kaiju against the giant Jaegers of the Pan Pacific Defense Corps. PPDC, y'all! Set up begins by dividing the players into two teams, the PPDC and the invading kaiju. Next, choose either the quick play cards, especially if you're just starting out, or you can construct your own battle using the setup rules in the rulebook. Now today we've got our hands on an early prototype of the game, so we'll just be going over the core mechanics and victory points. First up, the kaiju players select their models and add the total threat value, located in the top right. This threat pool is totaled and then doubled. That number equals the amount of points the Jaeger team can use to purchase Jaegers and pilots for the game. Once selected, the Jaegers each begin with a con pod, one upgrade card, and two pilots, while the kaiju each begin with a kaiju signature card and two mutations. Players select these from the available pool before placing the models and also take the corresponding model's action deck. Kaiju begin the game with one rage and full kaiju blue. It's their magic blood. Jaeger begin with one charge and full ammo. The complete version of the game will include scenario cards which will dictate the map, the model starting placements, and building locations. Today we're setting up the skirmish scenario, which is set up roughly like this. Gameplay occurs over a series of turns, each divided into specific phases. First, players on both teams each select one action card from their deck and place it face down next to their model. Once all players have placed, everyone simultaneously reveals their action cards and reads them aloud with epic thematic voices, of course. Enrage! Supersonic punch! Furious slam! Death grip! Grab and rend! Toss! Fire tail spikes. Hit and run! That's not funny. Brace! Burrow! Then the team with the least models, or in the case of a tie, the kaiju, rolls the impulse die. The result either allows the activation of one model, two models, or no models. After resolving the outcome, the player passes the die to an opponent for their impulse roll. Activating a model contains two phases, movement and action. Movement always occurs first and is measured with a handy hex gauge. Boop. All models can move directly forward up to their speed value, located in the top left of their card, or movement backwards one hex. Additionally, models get one free pivot action during their movement phases. The Jaeger must move first and then pivot, but the agile kaiju can choose to pivot either before or after their movement. For example, this kaiju is going one, two, then pivot. Ooh. Once the movement has been completed, the player takes the action listed on the revealed card. Actions may include running, attacking, or special unique pilot maneuvers. Some action cards have a cost, such as ammo, kaiju blue, rage, or charge. Players have access to two types of attacks as well. You've got melee and ranged. For melee attacks, the models must be in direct contact with each other. And for either type of attack, the attacker must be facing the defender. Additionally, ranged attacks have a distance value, short if the target is within one hex gauge from the attacker, or long if not. Range can limit the attack options or the amount of damage. Once the target is selected, the attacker rolls combat dice equal to their model's skill value plus the power value. Ranged power values are on the action card, while melee power values are the red impact symbol on the model card. The defender rolls combat dice equal to their model's skill value and adds the armor value worth of dice. However, if that defender is not even facing the attacker, they're only going to roll armor dice, no skill roll for getting stabbed in the back. Players compare rolls. For any critical symbols, a player is granted a bonus die to roll, and all successes, including critical successes, are totaled. If the attacker has more successes than the defender, they get to deal that damage. For every three successes over the defender's total, the attacker deals one damage. On the side of the model's card, the SP, or structure points, show the damage threshold of that model. The attacker draws action cards from the defender's action deck equal to the amount of damage. These cards limit the defender's actions by removing crucial weapons and abilities. You're going to place them on the side of your model card. Additionally, the damage side of the cards may incur a special penalty related to the model. Like this one. See? 
Once the damage threshold is met, the model is defeated and removed from the game. Additionally, during the roll, if a trigger symbol appears, certain special abilities can be activated. I'm not gonna tell you what they are though. Deal with it. Once the model has activated their action card, it is returned to their deck. After all models have been activated, the end of round occurs. This resets some models' abilities and allows players to access their reserves. Some scenarios allow extra models to be held off-map, summonable with a reserve roll. After round four, if neither side has been eliminated, start checking for the end of game at the end of each round. For this end of game, each player will roll a combat die and add all successes and criticals together. If the total value equals three or more, the game ends. If not, it continues and each subsequent round adds another die to each player's end of game check. Once the game ends in this way, the winner is determined by victory points, which are calculated based on the remaining kaiju or Jaeger and intact or destroyed buildings. Additionally, when calculating those victory points, draw one random battle assessment card, which will provide bonus VP. And that's Pacific Rim Extinction! I'm Becca Scott, and you can watch me play this game and other sweet games on Game the Game right here on Geek and Sundry. So we'll see you there!